we understand that there are many benefits to working with data in tables instead of normal ranges, including things like sorting, filtering, formatting, and even overall system stability. We also understand that it's not that difficult to set up data or prepare data so that it works well as a table. What I'm talking about there is not necessarily so that it works or doesn't work, but just so Excel can automatically do things instead of making us do things manually. This includes things like creating and including a header row. But the question still exists, how do we actually convert data from a normal range to a table? Well, the answer is kind of both one and twofold. It's onefold because the method is exactly the same. It's twofold because there's two different locations from which we can create the table. Let's go ahead and start with probably the easiest or the most commonly accessible one. Now, before we get too far, I want you to notice that I am using the Creating Tables file that can be found in the Chapter 2 Working Files folder. We have some basic data here. It has some headers, it has some data, and it fits all of the requirements for a table. We need to create the table. The very first hint or tip that I can give you is make sure that your cursor is somewhere, anywhere within the data. It doesn't matter where you click, just click somewhere inside the data range you want to convert. This is going to help Excel identify where the data is. Now, from the Home tab, if you go about three quarters of the way over, you'll notice the Styles group. And in the Styles group, there's an option that says Format as Table. Now, I'm really not a big fan of that. Technically, it does format as a table, but as we're going to see, it does a whole lot more than that. And I think this is a little bit of a misnomer because it confuses people. Tables are much more than formatting, even though this particular option does really focus on the formatting. We can see that by clicking on the option that displays the gallery. There's very simple or subtle styles, and there's a lot of more dramatic ones. We're going to focus much more on all of these formatting options in another video. So for now, all we have to do is simply click on one that we like. I'm going to choose this one. When we click, the gallery disappears and a small window appears on the screen. There are only two things we have to verify. And I say verify because if we've formatted our data or prepared our data as I've suggested, Excel is automatically going to know the entire region that contains our data. In this case, it happens to be A1 through J51. The second thing that we have to do, besides verify that the range identified is correct, is to tell Excel whether our table is supposed to have a header row. Again, if we've done everything the way I've suggested, it should automatically make this choice for us. And in this case, it says, yes, I do see that the top row of this data includes labels. All that really means we have to do is click or tap OK. And that's it. I'm going to click to deselect the table, but we have just converted that entire range of cells into a table with all of the functionality and formatting that goes along with it. It looked for a row that contained nothing but text entries. That included at least two columns. And then it looked to see if the region had two or more rows that followed it with no completely blank rows or lines. When it found that chunk of data, it simply found the entire chunk of data and put a border around it and included everything in the table. That's why that preparation of our data is so important. So that's the first method. Now let's take a look at the second method. I've actually included three different worksheets that are virtually identical. So we're going to go to the bottom of the screen and this time work with the sales no header worksheet. There are actually two things that I want you to notice that are going to be different this time. The first is that our top row does not include a header row. The second is that we are going to use the second method to create this table. Once again, we wanna make sure that our cursor is somewhere in the data. And this time, we're going to access the Insert tab. From the Insert tab in the Tables group, there's actually an option that says Table. When we give that a click, you'll notice that we do not see the drop-down gallery. This is the primary difference between using this method versus the one on the Home tab. Remember how we said the one on the Home tab was Format as Table? That one gave you the formatting options. This one doesn't. Now don't worry, again in that formatting video, we'll show you how to change it, but this is going to use the default style instead of letting us choose the style initially. The rest of the process though is exactly the same. It puts the marching ants or the marquee around our data. We're going to check and make sure that that data range is still accurate. And this time, because our data does not have headers, notice that Excel is still smart and says, I don't think there are headers. If there were, we could check the box, 
but since there are not, we're going to leave it deselected. So once again, we'll click or tap OK. Once again, we have a table. We didn't get to choose the style, but a style has still been applied. But one of the things I wanted you to notice, because it didn't have a header row already, the table needed to create one. And what this does is generate generic names. Column 1, Column 2, Column 3, Column 4. I don't know about you, but those aren't very useful. Yes, we could go in and change each of these values, but wouldn't it have been easier to just prepare our data first and have those names already in place before we created the table? That's all I'm going to say about that. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other, but one certainly seems simpler to me. Now, to show you that the second method does work exactly the same as the first, if we have a header row, we're going to go to our last worksheet. This one is called Sales from Insert. It is exactly like our first example, except we're going to run it by using the Insert option just to prove to you that it's exactly the same. Insert, Table, OK, and it's done. Because the top row of data already had a fill color, and because we did not get to choose the style that we wanted to apply, that fill color remains. But one more time, I'll remind you, we're going to talk a lot about formatting in a different video. A couple of things that we've talked about are the fact that I think it is important to prepare your data ahead of time. Not that Excel can't make a table without it, it just makes it a cleaner, more simple process. It's also important to make sure that your cursor is somewhere inside the data so you don't have to type or otherwise select the entire data range after you start the table conversion process. I didn't mention it before, but it's important to note we did not need to select the entire range before creating the table. As long as our cursor is in an area that meets all of our requirements, Excel will select the entire table for us. It may not be important here where we only have a few columns and about 50 rows, but imagine that we were filling up this worksheet with 65,000 columns and a million rows. I certainly don't want to have to drag to include all of that in my selection. What I hope you can see is that with just a little bit of preparation, creating tables is actually a very simple process, taking somewhere around two or three clicks, depending on where you happen to be located, before you start. But that is certainly something that we all can do to get the fabulous functionality that we're going to see as we continue to work with these tables.